Hi, everyone. Hi there. Okay, hi, everyone. As we wait for the participants to join, please introduce yourself in the chat box by um, typing your name, your university, and your country. My name is Shreem Tolu Alashe. I'm a Minimum Fellow and uh, I'm a Campus Director from Lagos State University, Nigeria. Oh. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Adebi Ikeinde, possibly a lot of energy. Uh, I'm, I'm also from Lagos State University, in Nigeria, and also a Campus Director of Lagos State University, Minimum Fellowship. It's nice having you around on this last webinar. I welcome you all to the system final webinar of the Million Fellowship that we are featuring Gates Struck from the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. Thank you for joining us today. Do introduce yourself on the chat box. Thank you very much. Hi folks, can everyone hear me? I can. You can. Okay, great. Hi, um, my name is Katie Strzok. I'm with the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. Um, I am our lead uh, project manager for our global campaign, Goalkeepers. Uh, excited to be here with you guys today and uh, share all that I know about working at the foundation. I'm moderated the group for about 20 minutes asking Mrs. Trump to talk about our experiences. Now, for the remaining 30 minutes, we will open it up for a Q&A session that way you can ask the questions um, to Mrs. Trump. Now, always remember to mute yourself when you're not speaking. And through the webinar, type in productions and questions in the chat box. Um, for those that have joined us, welcome. Um, please introduce yourself, write down your name, university, and country down in the chat box. We would like to introduce Ms. Katie Struck. Uh, Katie Struck is the lead project manager for the foundation's largest campaign, Housekeepers. In this capacity, she's responsible for stakeholder engagement, managing timelines, and deliverable due dates across the campaign elements, reports, events, campaign, and accelerators. In addition, she manages stakeholders' engagement and management for the campaign leadership team. Katie joined Global Policy and Advocacy in December of 2012. Prior to that, she spent four years on the WSH team as a senior program assistant while completing her graduate degree. Katie holds a Master of Arts in Policy Studies from the University of Washington, where she focused on state government alternative sanitation policy, as well as a bachelor's degree in business administration, focusing on corporate communications. Prior to joining the foundation, Katie was a staff associate at the Nations League of Cities, where she coordinated the board oversight and engagement. Also managed a number of large municipal government companies. I think it's nice having someone like Katie Struck join us for the last webinar of the Millennium Fellowship. And we're all anticipating to learn a lot from them. Thank you very much. I think over to Shreya. Okay, Mrs. Struck. Um, I just want to ask, what are the things you look out when you ask people for, um, or when people apply for grants, what are the things you look out when they ask for grants? Because I know you work with the Melinda and um, Bill Gates Foundation. What are the things you look out for? Uh, thanks for that question. Um, I can explain it. Let me back up and explain a couple of things. Uh, how the foundation is structured is that we work in a couple, we work across a number of issues. Um, specifically, we work within global policy and advocacy is one division. We work in global health and we work in uh, global development as well as our US programs. So within that, um, we, are, we have a number of issue experts and who think about what are the things that align to the foundation's strategies within each of these topics. And then from there, depending on the particular issue, um, for example, water sanitation and hygiene, we figure out what makes the most sense that we want to see from a particular grant. Um, speaking in generalities, uh, I would say um, 
a willingness to partner and a willingness to really think through and partner through together on what that strategy looks like uh, from an issue perspective. Uh, from the advocacy perspective, really it's more of an understanding of the particular issue on the ground in the space that we're working on and within that country. That said, I should clarify that um, my particular role is working on campaigns as opposed to uh, individual grants. So something that's a little more led by the foundation as opposed to uh, an individual grant. That was great, thank you very much. So basically, uh, also to Yuma, as you said earlier, your focus is on campaign management and the likes. So can you tell us thus far, what campaign has the foundation incorporated into the SDGs? Sustainable development goals. Are there any model of campaign, particularly for developed and developing countries, that have been done by you guys or are planning to do? And also, with more focus on the universal system, because sincerely, our fellows are from one university or the others. So, we want to know does the foundation have any plan of campaign policies as regarding the SDGs for the universal system? Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thanks for that question. Um, so, the foundation works on on one particular uh, major campaign that's spread across all of our issues, and we call that campaign goalkeepers. I'm the lead project manager for goalkeepers. Uh, it is really meant to accelerate progress uh, against the SDGs in a set of uh, uh, particular areas of focus, with, and I, uh, in a set of particular areas of focus around um, both accelerating progress, um, uh, raising awareness, and inspiring people to take actions. And we're hopeful that um, by doing these things, we will have increased the likelihood by the time we get to uh, 2030 to make uh, to realize the SDGs where possible. We also, within this capacity, are trying to drive accountability so that um, we find a way to increase the accountability of leaders to meet their SDG financing and policy commitments. Thank you very much, Ma, for that question. Um, I just want to ask, I've known about the Bill and Melinda um, Gates Foundation, this is like forever. Um, I just want to know, are there any opportunities for students Especially students in the social impact sector, are there any opportunities for them with probably working with um, the Bill and Melinda um, Gates Foundation? That's all. Are you asking about internships? Yes, internships are the likes. Yeah. So the foundation does a number of different um, types of structures in terms of internships and whatnot. Um, there yeah. is, can you hear me? I can hear you. The foundation does a number of different uh, types of internships. Some are uh, through specific universities uh, and, and particular issues and programs. Some are um, in a capacity from kind of uh, your um, uh, your kind of high well, what the equivalent is is in the U.S. is high school, but high, making that transition from high school to college. Um, those there's those opportunities as well um, there's a fairly and and then in addition there's a kind of a third tier that is um, the folks who have finished their undergraduate work and are have been in the field for a number of years and then maybe go back to fulfill their master's programs and there's uh, internships for those folks as well uh, in terms of the specific uh, process for that. It depends on um, the program that you're specifically after. I will say uh, timing for this is it takes about a kind of a year-long process and in terms of 2019 for the summer of 2019 I do believe the foundation is currently in the process of shortlisting candidates 
uh, for their summer internship programs. I'd be happy to follow up with this group and um, share some summaries about what that looks like and how people can get more involved specifically. Okay. Thank you very much for that, Ms. Kitty. So basically, before I move to you, man, as fellows are joining, if you have any questions, can you drop it in the chat because it's the name of your university, your country, as to be attended to during the Q&A session. So back to Mrs. Katie Strzok. So basically, you know, being the lead project manager, particularly for campaign, it's an agreement that you've encountered numerous challenges. And for us here on the platform of Millennium Fellowship, we have numerous projects that we want to carry out or we are doing currently. So also from our parts, we are encountering one or two challenges, possibly in funds, in management scheme. So we don't know some of the challenges. How do you go about it? When you have issues with your team, how do you manage it? Or what is your major core values that have been making you have a success story or this one? We'd love to learn from that. Thank you very much. Thanks for that question. Um, I would say uh, that some of my biggest challenges that I face within the context of goalkeepers are through um, are working across partners and being thoughtful about that, about how everybody comes together in the context of the SDGs. Because let's be honest, it's going to take the world to work on this and we need to think about how we can be thoughtful about that to partner together, um, both as individuals and organizations and, and be very um, kind of uh, a, a bit of methodical about that relationship building and continuing to have the conversation of how we bring everybody together. So I would say that's where my biggest challenges uh, lie. And in terms of finding solutions for that, it's, it's building those relationships where we can with the right people. Uh, I have a team of, we work with a team of folks who are on are focused on donor donor government relations and they um, spend their entire careers building that relationship having that conversation with a number of donor partners so when when the time comes there is a strong and clear ask from those folks about what it is that they want to kind of contribute and partner on um, uh, I would say um, our regional colleagues as well when those who are focused, um, uh, for example, in Nigeria, the the clear asks that we want that are wanted by our government partners in Nigeria or our grantee partners on the ground, those come through very quickly and we just need to make sure that we have kind of those open channels of communication. Um, so yeah, I, I would say above all, it's that partner focus, that relationship focus uh, and being really open to hearing um, varied views, inputs, what have you. Okay, thank you very much, Ma'am, for that question. Um, the next question I'm going to be asking you is more personal. I currently am into mental health um, advocacy. I currently run a nonprofit um, that deals with, um, you know, um, information awareness around mental health. So I just want to ask, as I said, it's more personal. What advices do you have for students in the social impact sector? Um, my advice for students in the advocacy sector, uh, I would say um, well, guys, there's a lot of work still to be done. So <laughs> Be happy about that. There is plenty of <laughs> done right now. Um, I think I think as somebody who was once an ad, uh, an undergrad and also very passionate about the advocacy sector, what I told myself back then is um, continue to be hungry and to reach out and connect where you can. I think that makes a lot of sense. Um, I think the field is looking for new and innovative and um, effective ideas. The, the ability to shape and change things um, and connect people with social, uh, connect people with social, uh, social media 
is a big wide open space that I think the larger institutions are just catching up on and just learning about. It's a way to be innovative. It's a way to be hungry. Um, I think being open to those ideas and knowing that your generation is the generation that has, is really truly an expert at this compared to others. And, and also just a willingness to, as I said before, continue to connect, to continue to build those relationships. I think this, um, the Millennium Fellows is a great opportunity to do that um, and to build that network out. So from that standpoint, I would say you're on a, the right track being with this group and connecting with peers across the globe because it, a number of you folks are going to be, do the amazing things that we're, yeah. that my generation is hoping for. <laughs> so. Okay. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. So I think now, uh, fellows in the house, we are moving to the Q&A section. You know, we all have a lot of questions now. I want to ask Ms. Katie Stroud, particularly with affiliation as a project manager in the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. So we want to try to open to everybody in the house to post your questions basically on the chat box as we are moving to the next question. I think we have a question from Mike Gallo. I think it's nice you opening the floor in your question. So kindly unmute yourself and possibly ask a question. Thank you very much. Hi, Katie. Thanks for coming in today um, and talking with us and sharing everything about your experiences um, with the goalkeepers projects. Um, my question was, how do you overcome the data or a challenge of of tracking data on the progress of the SDGs for various goalkeepers projects in developing countries that don't necessarily have like exhaustive tech infrastructure that makes data sharing like very easy? That is a great question. Um, let's just say uh, it's not easy and the foundation does not have all of the answers. Let me lead with that. Um, starting at kind of the high level, the overall tracking of the SDGs um, is something that's still being thought about. Uh, the, there's a great group out there called Our World in Data, who's led by Max Roser, uh, who has uh, kind of taken it up uh, upon his organization and is working with the UN to track the SDGs at a global level, uh, at a very high level. That said, there's the data, some of these data sets um, are just incomplete and we don't have everything. Um, I will be happy to send you guys a link to this year's kind of goalkeepers report where we think that there's insufficient, some of the areas where we think that there's insufficient data, agriculture being one example. Um, in terms of individual and at a country level, we lean heavily on existing partners out there where we do have data sets and acknowledge um, where we have gaps in place and where we need to push to continue to get more data. I would say um, the foundation as a whole is very data hungry. So where we can be thoughtful and we can build that out, we are trying our best but definitely are leaning on existing efforts and partners to try and get that in place. Uh, does that answer your question? Great. Um, okay. Um, hi, Michael. You can um, unmute yourself and ask your question. Um, thanks so much, ma'am. My question is this. What is the reach of or the target audience for the Gate Foundation? And also, how can we as uh, Millennium Fellows be part of this movement? Yeah. So, um, the, this, there's a number of different audiences that the Goalkeepers Foundation is trying to reach. I would say our main uh, target audience is those who are a little more kind of mid-career, the chiefs of staff, the people who have um, been working on these campaigns for a number of years and have some kind of um, inside influencer ability uh, would be our main target. That is, that's not to say that we don't have other audiences that we're trying to reach as well. Um, we are trying to reach uh, 
prime ministers. We are trying to reach finance ministers. We are trying to reach, on, on somewhat of a level, the engaged public as well. Um, for the Millennium Fellows, in, and, and I should clarify, uh, the Goalkeepers uh, Project, although it's a global campaign, um, in, order, in order to be a little more focused, um, across the globe, we have chosen for the time being uh, eight particular countries that we're focused in, uh, Nigeria, Kenya, India, China, France, uh, Germany, the US, and UK. Um, uh, just, it, it makes life a little bit easier uh, rather than focusing on the entire globe. The Millennium Fellows, as part of your guys' engagement, um, I, it would be immensely helpful if you guys uh, could help us, um, help us in terms of uh, social media and, and what have you. One, in checking out the report, um, letting us know whether or not that resonates uh, on social media, I think would be tremendously helpful as well as um, there was, uh, as we build more campaigns for Goalkeepers 2019 and what have you, um, checking out that content, letting, know if it, letting us know if it resonates. Um, if, if we decide to do, uh, for example, a call to action this year, we had a youth advocacy accelerator where um, there was a call for um, there was a one-page call for smaller grants. If that should that opportunity uh, arise again in the future, I would love to see that you to see this group of individuals applying for those grants to to try and make the world a better place in terms of SDGs and data. And I'll be happy to uh, stay in touch with this group and share that information as it becomes available. That's great. Uh before other questions come on, you, you mentioned that you should eight different countries you are focusing on. And what mm -hmm. tears of my fashion is that Nigeria is part of the country. So yes. I've been uh, working with the SDGs quite a long time now, I think since 2015. And I said, this is my third year with the SDGs. But I didn't really see the impacts from my university, Lagos University, of what the goalkeepers have been doing to keep on track. But like we've done a lot of projects. And uh, the data analysis, the updates of even the university uh, involvement in the OCGs who are part in Nigeria, data are not really sent to anywhere because we have requests from anybody. So, as well in Nigeria, how are we trying and how are you guys possibly working towards getting the data from SDG implementations as well? I'm sorry, can you ask the question one more time? There's a lot of background noise. I, I do apologize. Thank okay, sorry for that. Uh, no basically, I said that uh, the goalkeepers, you know, you mentioned Nigeria as points, one point of the country. And basically, uh, I've done a lot of SDGs projects with other teams in other university, And indeed, there's no track record or request from anybody from the goalkeepers on how far we've gone. So I don't know. From our own part of the country, we don't really know what was happening with the concept of goalkeepers' data analysis, particularly in the university system. How is it that the goalkeepers are carrying the university students along in the SDG data analysis they are getting? Thank you very much. So I wouldn't say that goalkeepers is targeting um, uh, university students at this particular time. Um, that's not to say that it won't be uh, relevant for you guys as the future, as you get out there and you get working and whatnot. So, please do stay focused and, and, and stay interested. In terms of um, Nigeria and paying attention, as you know, the SDGs are, meeting the SDGs, uh, Nigeria is critical, uh, absolutely critical to many of the targets one through six. So anywhere that you have kind of interest or focus uh, or passion, please let me know. Um, that's of great interest to us. I think that's great. So basically, we have some more questions for you. So firstly, let's call on uh, from the University of Ghana, we are busy to ask your question. Thank you very much. Are you there? 
I would like to ask Kiri about how uh, is SKIT's um, foundation, how do, they, how do you collect the feedback and as well as filter the, uh, the feedback to ensure that um, uh, the best value is offered to communities? This is with regards to communities that are really remote and they're not really technologically advanced. Thank you. Yeah. So in terms of the campaign and thinking about uh, feedback, we think about uh, we think about this in a couple of high level kind of buckets of work. One, have we created um, awareness and interest in goalkeepers so that uh, politicians feel um, feel that there is interest in the SDGs and that they have the political support uh, to try and make changes and advance the work. Then we think about, um, are we driving engagement around the key issues with the people who can basically make the change on the SDGs themselves? And then, um, and then are there individuals that we can help facilitate meaningful actions, things that they can do to contribute to the SDGs as individuals? Uh, as a foundation, we break this down into individual uh, kind of targets and numbers, um, thinking across uh, primarily our social media engagement, um, and uh, then uh, thinking about folks in the room for the particular event secondary. Um, we uh, then we kind of add all of this up and figure out whether or not that makes sense. In terms of feedback as an okay, so. on a qualitative um, standpoint, okay. uh, we then we did a number of attendee surveys as well as um, surveys from those who have been kind of watching from the social media perspective to see what has made sense uh, holistically, what hasn't resonated for them, and how, and how we can feed that into the next cycle in terms of improvement. Thanks for that question. Okay, so we have been Uludayo from Lagos State University asking this question on SDGs. So we can hear you move on. Okay, I am, my question is that how can the SDGs be achieved in de developing countries, especially those involving like gender equality and climate action? That's go five and go ten. So that's a great question about how the SDGs can be achieved in developing countries, especially goals involving gender equality and climate. Um, I will say, in terms of individual actions. It's going to take a number of partners and I will be the first to tell you I am not an expert in gender or climate. I am really good at pulling together uh, campaigns. But in developing countries, there are a number of organizations on the ground who are best positioned to tell the rest of the world what makes sense uh, in terms of reaching the targets and what have you. I think it's up to the rest of the world, um, large, for example, larger NGOs uh, like the foundation, WGO, to listen to those uh, individual organizations on the ground and empower them where they can. Thank you very much for that. Thank you. So basically, we have an Andrew from Cornell University. Can you please ask your question? Thank you. Mm -hmm. Hello. <clears throat> I'm Andrew Rosenblatt from Cornell. Um, my question deals with implementation. Uh, so um, the overall plans for a project are generally discussed uh, at length and great detail and get a lot of attention. But really, it's, that plan's implementation doesn't really get as much attention. Um, so I was wondering how you managed to break, uh, get hold of all the different stakeholders, getting them on the same page, uh, like governments, workers on the ground, the public suppliers, uh, to ensure a successful implementation um, for a plan to achieve uh, to achieve its goal. Yeah. Um, so, in terms of this, for well, let's speak about it. Let's take the goalkeepers campaign as a project in general. Um, 
I think that's what you're asking is, is about project implementation and maybe not SDG implement, implementation? Yeah, project implementation. Yeah, so, so I would say um, the reason that I, I think that planning takes, gets most of the focus in what hot, what not is because that execution window is really so short. Um, and if you've really done a good job, the implementation is really quite quick. Um, uh, for the goalkeepers campaign itself, um, it's really a window for kind of the main portion of the campaign of about two to three weeks. So it's really quite quick and we spend, I would say a good nine months prior to that planning for that quick three weeks in that quick turn. What does the report look like? What does it look like when it's launched? Um, how does everyone talk about it and what have you? Um, I think in terms of policies and what have you, that's a much longer play uh, per se, uh, especially at the national level that takes years and years and years of effort um, as opposed to kind of the project that I work on, which is, a little more succinct and um, a little more quick turn uh, rather than individual policy change. I would say that's more a one by one, much more kind of methodical uh, sort of issue. Thank you. Thanks for that question. Okay, thank you very much, Ms. Katie, for your answer on um, project implementation. Um, I think we can move on to the next question. We have Esra from. University of California. Okay, hi, my name is Estra. Uh, I am from Saudi Arabia, but I study in the University of California, Davis. And I just wanted to know, how does the Gates Foundation incorporate the local perspective in the um, goalkeepers project? Like, how do they, how do you know um, how to approach certain communities and whether what the campaign does is actually needed or wanted in those communities? That's a great question, Esra. Um, how in the first year of goalkeepers uh, we pulled together the campaign and the report and we did some testing kind of pre and post uh, kind of trying to learn whether or not we won over hearts and minds and while we had kind of won over hearts and minds in that first month we tested folks two months later and there wasn't a whole lot of traction uh, Beyond that, um, uh, beyond that, we, we also didn't have a sense of, from a local perspective of whether or not this resonated. So as I mentioned earlier, there's about eight countries that we're particularly focused on and how we are trying to shape and think about that slightly differently is we're looking to build a local community in each of these particular countries people who are actively working on the SDGs in country have, have great ideas and strong opinions about what needs to happen on the ground in terms of uh, SDG achievement, whether between one through goals one through 17, which is, is quite a lot of uh, area to cover, uh, but within you know maybe one of their own particular issues, uh, really is passionate about the goals, wants to see um, them achieved and, and has, is, is willing to provide us with some insight about how that should work uh, at a local level. Uh, how we select and find these people, um, it, there's a number of different ways. Sometimes our grantees point out to these folks. Sometimes these folks reach out to us. Sometimes it's desk research, finding um, who are the people who are um, engaging with civil society or leading civil society, or maybe they are artists who are very passionate about um, the SDGs and bringing light and bringing attention to them. Um, there's all kinds of different ways that we're trying to find these individuals, but our hope is as we build this community and, and find these individuals, it will um, kind of help give momentum to the campaign, both through their ideas, their input, and their advice, and uh, will be kind of their reflections and their views will be what comes forward in future iterations. Thank you very much, Katie. 
Uh, so basically, uh, we are running up the session in the absence of uh, no further questions. So basically, Katie, how can we contact you, provided we need your help, follow up questions? Uh, I think before that, Saeed Rizak is pleading to ask one more question. So Saeed, can you just, you know, ask a question for round it up? Sorry, Katie, just spare us two minutes of your time. Thank you. So Hi, hi, Katie. It's, it's uh, sorry. I'll make this quick. I know we're running late. Um, no worries. I just wanted to ask if, if I'm someone that's very interested in pursuing a career in advocacy. So in order for me to do that, I know it's my it's my senior year at uh, Concordia University. Is there is there something that I could be doing uh, to kind of lead up to me eventually having a career in advocacy, where where it's some some form of invo involvement on campus. And, and what are some skills that I should, I should hone that are going to um, you know, model me towards uh, a career in advocacy in the future? Yeah, thanks for that. Um, I think there's a, a few different things that you can do. Um, I can't speak to the steps on campus, but I can think of other ideas perhaps outside campus that might make sense. Um, potentially, student body council on campus, but I, I have limited, I'll be honest, I have limited experience with that. Um, outside campus, as you're getting ready to kind of get into your career and whatnot, if there's an issue that you are passionate about um, that that resonates with you, if you can find, um, if there's a group or an organization that you can become a part of, that always, I think, makes sense. And, and you can start to kind of see what it is to kind of build that momentum. Find it's got to be something that you're excited about, or you'll just <laughs> you'll you won't be you won't be motivated to do it. But I think getting whatever it is out there, finding whether or not that uh, finding something that resonates with you and getting involved with that uh, as a particular campaign. Um, I'm there's got to be you know there's millions of campaigns going on at any one point in time. So finding one that resonates with you that you can be involved with, involved in from a grassroots level, uh, I would see as a good first step. Um, then from there, as you kind of graduate and get out into the field, um, I myself was, was um, pretty scrappy for lack of a better term. And um, uh, did whatever I could to get in with an, an, a national organization at a, a fairly um, low level role and was was wherever I could was very, very helpful in our advocacy efforts um, on the Hill in DC. It's, it wasn't glamorous. It wasn't pretty by any means. Um, but I was just, I was very scrappy. I was very hungry. Uh, and that's what I did as soon as I finished my undergrad. And I'm so glad I did it. I would have, I would do, would have done it a hundred times over. Thank you. Thank you very much, um, Katie. Um, we're moving on to our final question from Mitzi from University of Monterey. Okay. Mm -hmm. Hi, Katie. Can you okay, please? So oh, sorry. Can you please? Please tell us a bit about how advocacy works and if there's a policy win you're most proud of. So, um, advocacy works. Uh, thanks for that question. Um, advocacy works in terms of driving leaders to uh, be accountable so that they feel empowered or um, obliged to change um, specific policies. Within the foundation, we have to be very careful of what that line is, because as a, a charitable foundation, we certainly cannot lobby. Um, so we, we really do have to be thoughtful. We cannot ask for specific policy change, but that's the beauty of the SDGs. Um, the world has agreed on, in generalities, uh, what we can all sign up to, what we can agree on as a globe that needs to happen in terms of uh, change for the better for the world. Um, in terms of, I would say, 
in terms of individual uh, advocacy and policy change. Um, things that I have been particularly proud of are on a much smaller scale and a uh, much more national scale um, in terms of um, thinking back to uh, actually time when I was with the National League of Cities and convincing cities and towns um, that it made sense to um, insure, self-insure as a group. These are small specific wins, but they make very, very specific change. Uh, as opposed to what I do now, which is much more on um, the campaign scale and and doing and working on communications and and kind of trying to win hearts and minds over rather than going toe to toe on a individual campaign. So, so excited for you guys. Okay, so thank you very much, Ms. Katie. We'll just take just one more question from. Um, Daniel from AME University. Um, Daniel, you can only just ask a question. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. I'm Daniel Rich from Liberia. I'm from the African Episcopal University, EMU, from uh, Liberia. And my questions have to do with uh, do the, uh, the accelerator have any plan to expand it, uh, activities to other countries such as uh, Liberia to empower young people to monitor the impact of the SDG at the local level? Yeah, thanks for that question. Um, any uh, plans to expand goalkeepers to other African countries? Um, I think I think there's, um, we think about it in a couple of ways. Um, while Nigeria and Kenya, I would say, are kind of the priority audiences for goalkeepers, where there is opportunities, we are still kind of excited and hungry. Um, I don't know if any of you were able to watch um, the recordings from the goalkeepers and event in New York that happened in late September. Um, there we were able to uh, work with the Chief Technology Officer David Senge from Sierra Leone and President Bio. And um, we have been able to find synergies and um, a lot of excitement in different ways to partner together with both of them uh, because of their eagerness and willingness um, to make progress on the SDGs. So I would say, although we have this primary audience of Nigeria and Kenya in terms of action and m wanting to make change, um, it's definitely more open than that. Um, if, if people are excited and there is a window, the foundation uh, is not going to walk away uh, per se, if that makes sense. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, we hope by next year also the next time the project continues there will be incorporation of more African countries and also other developing countries to the Goalkeeper Foundation. So, Ms. Katie, uh, I'm sure that other fellows in the house here and some others will want to contact you, possibly about one or two questions and advices. So, how can we get across to you? We only recommend that you possibly share your emails on the chat box as it's probably for you not to say it since this video is recorded and we posted on the YouTube platform. So we appreciate it if you can uh, tell us possible more there, possibly by typing that on the chat box, how we can get across to you. Thank you very yeah. much. Um, happy to provide my group with, uh, provide this group with my email address. Um, I'll type that in in just a second. Um, I, yes, while I might be slightly slow to uh, respond to email, but happy to, I am, <laughs> if you just keep with me and give me a little bit of patience, I am happy to follow up and answer any questions. Um, as well, if um, starting in the new year, if you guys have inquiries and would like some informational interviews to kind of just walk you guys through what it's like to work at the foundation and whatnot, um, happy to work through uh, Sam and crew to set something up like that and, and talk about um, what it's like to work at the foundation. Uh, I work in campaigns. That's one small slice of the foundation. There are so many other pieces. Um, there's the um, issue-specific program advocacy teams. There are the 
um, the regional teams working with um, local governments. There are the uh, donor government relations teams. It's there's quite a few different avenues in terms of advocacy and communications at the foundation. Happy to share with this group what I know and uh, set up some more time or uh, work with individuals uh, as well if you guys want to just ask questions about what it's like to work at the foundation and um, yeah, what about what I know working about communicate, what I know about working in the fields of communications and advocacy. Okay. okay, thank you very much, Ma. We appreciate your time. Thank you. So basically, uh, we like to say to everyone, particularly to some Vega, you know, like Kag, it's nice working with you guys, you know, the fellowship from Section 1, Section two, 1, theory and fast two, three, and I believe most universities have completed their sessions. Uh, I sincerely hope another platform such as this, that we all, with our different diversities and groups, we come together share our ideas, you know, collaborate together and towards the advancement of the SDGs. It's nice having you guys all around. Don't let us stop our pace. Don't let us give up until we see the SDGs come into reality, despite the difficulties surrounding our country, by putting our best, you know, uh, putting more mind, passion, need mind together in group. I know we can achieve the SDGs and promote the UNAI principles. Thank you once again to everyone. Sam, thank you, Noah, you've been doing a great job. And to Miss Katie, nice having you around. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Thank you.